And don't forget to order your copy of Football Game Plan's latest book, Stiff Arming Football Myths, an excellent book that you can find on our website at footballgameplan.com slash books available in both PDF as well as paperback form. Welcome to footballgameplan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our 2014 NFL team preview for the Arizona Cardinals. We're going to take a look at their offense, their defense, as well as their special teams. But let's start off on the offensive side of the football with the quarterback position. 12-year vet Carson Palmer is back at the helm for the Arizona Cardinals, and the biggest reason why Arizona didn't make the playoffs last year was due to the amount of turnovers. 22 interceptions last season won't get the job done, and Palmer did play well enough to keep them in the playoff hunt until Week 17, but this year, in order to break through, he has to protect the football. In the draft, they selected Logan Thomas out of Virginia Tech in the fourth round, and he'll compete with Drew Stan and Ryan Lindley for backup duties, and in my opinion, he should be the number two quarterback, as I think the other two guys are average at best. I'm a big fan of the backfield here in Arizona. I believe they can go four deep at running back with Andre Ellington, Stephon Taylor, Jonathan Dwyer, and undrafted rookie free agent Zach Bowman. Now, Ellington is the home run threat that excels on both ends and is primed for a breakout season, and both Taylor and Dwyer are tough to bring down chain movers, and I believe undrafted rookie free agent Zach Bowman out of Northern Arizona gives them an explosive slasher and much more value to the football team than Robert Hughes does. This is another strong unit for the Arizona Cardinals. They boast an excellent one-two combination in future Hall of Famer Larry Fitzgerald, who's entering his 11th season in the desert, and third-year player Michael Floyd, who finished second on the team in receptions, but first in yards, going to go 1,000 and yards per catch at 16. Gone is Andre Roberts, and there's a battle for the number three role between free agent signee Ted Ginn and second-year player Jerron Brown and two rookies in John Brown out of Pittsburgh State and Walter Powell out of Murray State. Now, both Ginn and Powell are excellent fourth and fifth options, and they also excel as returners. While Jerron Brown played well last year as an undrafted free agent, but John Brown, in my opinion, would be the guy you want as your number three. Don't let the size fool you. Brown can play on the outside as well as in the slot and is extremely quick off the ball. Now they have a wealth of solid options at tight end with John Carlson and Jake Ballard. Both of them were inline guys while Rob Hausler and rookie second round pick Troy Nicholas out of Notre Dame are more of a threat in the passing game. So look for a combination of all four guys this year providing excellent flexibility for offensive coordinator Harold Goodwin. The offensive line was fairly respectable last year, and I believe they got better in the offseason. Firstly, they get back last year's first-round pick, Jonathan Cooper, at guard, who missed the entire season with a broken leg. They also signed tackle Jared Bell here in free agency from the Oakland Raiders, and those two moves alone strengthen the left side. Center Lyle, center line, and right tackle Bobby Massey are two very good players as starters, and the battle is mainly at right guard between Paul Faneca and Larry Watford. Faneca did a fine job last year as a starter, while Watford is very athletic and who they drafted last season to eventually be the guy. Now, there's very good depth here with guys like Philip Blake, Nate Potter, Max Starts, and also Ted Larson. And another name to keep an eye on is undrafted rookie free agent Anthony Steen out of Alabama, who, in my opinion, could be in the mix as well at right guard. You can make a legit case for the Cardinals having the best defensive line in the NFC West. They have a very good group that paved the way for the Cards to finish 6th in total defense and 7th at points allowed. Starters Darnell Dockett, Calais Campbell, and Dan Williams do an excellent job at reestablishing the line of scrimmage while also getting after the quarterback. Campbell and Dockett combined for 13 and a half sacks while Williams was solid in every facet last year for Arizona. The focus was to build the depth in the offseason and they accomplished that with rookie defensive ends Kareem Martin out of UNC and Ed Stinson out of Alabama, and even nose tackle Bruce Gaston out of Purdue, who's an undrafted free agent. Martin, in my opinion, was a steal. He was the most technically sound defensive end in the country, and in free agency, the club signed Frosty Rucker from the Cleveland Browns to also bring added pass rush. This is a position where you can have some questions about the Arizona Cardinals. Inside linebacker Darrell Washington will be suspended for the entire season, putting 13-year vet Larry Foote in the starting lineup after being signed from the Pittsburgh Steelers to provide depth. 
Second year player Kevin Minter out of LSU is expected to step up and be an impact guy while Lorenzo Alexander, who excels on special teams, and free agent signing Ernie Sims could also see extended time on the inside. Outside linebacker, in my opinion, is a little bit more stable with John Abraham, who led the team in sacks with 11 and a half. And on the opposite side, you have Sam Macho and Matt Shaughnessy competing for the starting job. And both guys are very capable. The hope is that last year's fourth round pick, Alex Okafor, can make significant strides. I will also look at two underrated signings in Adrian Tracy and undrafted free agent Daryl Johnson out of ECU. Both guys bring not only the ability to rush the passer, but also could play inside at linebacker. The Cardinals boast a tremendous secondary that's filled with ball hawks. Patrick Peterson is one of the most dynamic players, regardless of position, in the NFL. And he and free agent signee Antonio Cromartie are big physical corners with ball skills. Both Gerard Powers and Justin Bethel are solid slot corners, and Bethel brings tremendous speed to the position along with Brian McCann. The Cardinals will also get back Tyron Matthew at some point in the early part of the season, and he proved his worth very early, being involved in forced fumbles, interceptions, and making plays at both corner and safety. And look for either Tony Jefferson, who's an excellent combo safety, or Rashad Johnson, who's more of a classic center fielder, to take over until he returns. In the first round this year, the Cardinals took Deion Buchanan out of Washington State, who's a rare, strong safety with ball skills, and he'll push for starting duties along with Tony Jefferson. And he's an ideal player to use as a nickel linebacker in certain situations. And this was an excellent pick for Arizona and just strengthens an already tough unit. From kicking to coverage, the Cardinals have a heck of a special teams unit. Punter Dave Zasadil averaged 45.7 yards a punt last year, downing 35 inside the 20. Defensive backs Justin Bethel and Rashad Johnson make excellent coverage guys on kickoff and punt teams. And kicker Jay Feely was solid last year, connecting on 83% of his kicks. And in free agency, the signing of Ted Ginn only strengthens the return game. And I would also expect in certain situations to see Patrick Peterson returning punts. Rookie Walter Powell was also one of the best returners in college football last year. This was a 10-6 football team last season that has a strong defense and a very talented offense while also boasting excellent special teams. So you can see why there is a lot of optimism this year in Arizona. The cause for concern is that inside linebacker with the suspension of Darrell Washington, he was extremely important in pass defense and will be missed. You can also be concerned with veteran guys like Carson Palmer and John Abraham. Can he continue to play good football or will they start to decline this year? The road to the Super Bowl for the Cardinals goes as follows. Number one, Carson Palmer has to play great situational football. They have to do better in the red zone. Four-minute offense, two-minute offense on third down. They struggled last year in that capacity, and if they can play better in the situation, I think they have a great chance to make some noise in this division. And the running game has to balance out the offense. They can go four deep in the backfield, like I mentioned before, and maybe getting a guy like Jonathan Cooper back and adding Jared Bell here only strengthens this unit. They have to do a better job of running the football, and they also have to continue being a no-fly zone in the secondary. Great talent back there with Patrick Peterson, Antonio Cromartie, Tyron Matthew. Not only can those guys get their hands on the football, but they also have the ability to take it to the house. And now they've added Tony Jefferson, and I'm sorry, Tony Jefferson last year, and added Deion Buchanan. That right there bodes well for the Cardinals in this division. I have the Cardinals finishing third in the division. This could be the same situation for Arizona this year as it was last year. Very good football team that'll be on the outside looking in. And in my opinion, they'll have to sweep two out of the three division opponents in order to make the playoffs as the rest of the NFC is just as strong. I also don't think Carson Palmer is the guy to get them over the hump and they didn't do much to upgrade the spot in the offseason. So we'll see if he's an asset or a liability. But truth be told, he is the key to the Cardinals season. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Cardinal Fan Forums always showing football game plan support.